The Volvo Ocean Race fleet is just days away from the finish of League 2. 7,000 nautical miles from Lisbon to Cape Town, South Africa. The race continues to challenge even the most experienced, whilst for those attempting it for the first time, it's highlighted the high degree of competitiveness in the one design fleet. It's a new place for the team to be in, right? We're getting, getting our head kicked in, scared out the skin, and not really being able to fix it or not exactly knowing what's wrong. It's quite hard. Bloody hard this race. And the opposition are bloody good. Hard to keep your emotions in check, but um, yeah, that's sport, isn't it? If it wasn't emotional, um, yeah, we probably wouldn't do it. After a fast and furious opening 10 days at sea and an unusually rapid passage through the notorious, generally windless doldrums, the fleet are halfway home. For seven consecutive days, Team Brunel and Vessis 11th hour racing were locked in a private race of their own for third until the Dutch team finally broke the deadlock against the League One winners, setting their sights on the leaders. We've got to keep pushing, pushing. We've got Matt Frey in our sights, and that's our kind of next target. So we've, we've honed in on them like a heat-seeking missile, and we're going to take them down next. The fleet then had to roll the dice. How to navigate the St. Helena High, a near stationary high-pressure system in the South Atlantic, which blocks the direct route to Cape Town. The lead pack of Dongfong race team, Matt Frey, Tim Brunel and Vesta 7th Hour Racing aims their bows south and west, closest to the Brazilian coast, working around the centre of the high in a bid to be the first of the fresh westerlies in a rapid ride towards the finish. There's been a little bit of a high pressure ridge and um, it's forcing us a little bit further to the west toward Brazil to, to get around it. And, um, a little bit of a difference in opinion with Brunel as to what's the best way to do it, so we'll see, we'll see what happens in a few days. Team Exnobel gambled and elected to cut the corner to head east, taking the inside track around the Santa Helena High in an effort to overhaul the leading quartet to their southwest. They are um, to the east of us, and uh, so you can either continue south as we're doing, and then um, and then blast across east with the with the front a little bit later. Probably in a day or two, but they're sent to cut the corner to try and sail less and try to get the cat down earlier, but with the risk of missing the, missing the good part of the front. After struggling earlier in the league, Hong Kong's Sung Hun Kai Scallywag fought their way back into the mix, drawing level with D. Kafari's Turn the Tide on Plastic. I mean, you can see we're two and a half thousand miles to go, 10 days more sailing, but 11 days into the leg, we're about 200 metres in the lead and they're half a mile away. I'm pissed. They're still there. I want to get rid of them. Bloody scallies. A week from the finish, the fleet faced one of the most critical decisions of the leg. A test of nerves for all the navigators. When to turn left towards Cape Town. Well, we were one of the first ones to jibe actually away from Cape Town. Further to the west there's uh, more pressure. So we're trying to get to that area and then do the final jump and come on the train from that way. After leading for most of the leg, the mood on board Dongfong race team plummeted after delaying their decision to jive and allowing Mafre to move first and take over as leaders. As a result, the Chinese flag team found themselves east, closer to the light winds of the high pressure system and paid the price, battling instead for third. <laughs> Well, well, the last 24 hours after Santa Elena High, uh, we took uh, the south uh, as far south as possible and the quickest as possible. And, and right now it's paying, it's paying quite well to be here south of the fleet. And hopefully we can keep going like this with a little bit more wind than the others and moving forward. But with nearly a week of sailing still to go, there's plenty of racing left on leg two and plenty of time for things to change. With Breeze on, Mafre lead the charge as the fleet turn their vows towards Cape Town, expected to arrive over the weekend.